All right, so hi everybody. Thanks again for joining. I know you guys are trickling in here, um, but I just wanted to introduce what we're going to be talking about tonight. Myself, my co-host here. Um, today we're talking about how athletes can create impact in their communities. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Danielle Berman, the founder and CEO of Tackle What's Next. And if you've never joined a Tackle What's Next live stream before, welcome. We're really excited you're here. We host these conversations regularly for athletes and executives on different topics ranging from investing, mindset and identity, networking, philanthropy, like tonight, and more. And we hosted a really great conversation yesterday, for example, on the name, image, and likeness legislation and news coming out from the NCAA. Um, and I'll share a link in the chat uh, during this conversation where you can find some of our upcoming conversations as well as some of our previous conversations. So we provide accountability and community for athletes to achieve their goals outside of sports. We host these live, uh, live streams online and as well as live events when we're not in quarantine. Uh, so athletes can share stories and advice um, about the transition experience and the opportunities available for them outside of the game. Uh, we run accountability programs for athletes as well. Um, and we have a free LinkedIn group as well, so you guys can stay connected with our community and join us in our community that I'll share in the chat. So now I'd like to introduce my co-hosts, Alicia, Alicia and Michelle from Champions from, for Philanthropy, and they are going to introduce our moderator and kick off our conversation. So Michelle, I will turn it over to you. All right, thanks so much, Danielle. Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Mays. I am the co-founder of Champions for Philanthropy. And at Champions for Philanthropy, we work with professional athletes to assist them with their charitable pursuits. So that's everything from helping athletes to start a nonprofit organization or manage an existing foundation. And because having a nonprofit isn't right for every athlete, we also assist them with creating charitable initiatives and connecting them with other nonprofits and developing a strategy for giving. If you'd like to learn more about the work we do, please feel free to follow us on social media. Our handle is at Champions for Philanthropy. And now I'll turn it over to my co-founder, Alicia. Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia Powell, and Michelle and I are so excited to be partnering with Danielle and tackle what's next for this evening's event. A couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. If any of you tuning in have questions for the panelists, please feel free to drop them in the chat, and we'll do our best to do a few at the end uh, if we have time. If you plan to stick around for our open networking session at 6 p.m., Please stay on the conference once we wrap up the panel and we'll give you further instructions from there. Now we are ready for what is sure to be an exciting conversation. Our panelists are Angel McCautry, founder of the Angel McCautry Dream Foundation. We're excited to see the former WNBA Rookie of the Year, two-time WNBA scoring champion, and two-time gold medalist play this season with our new team, the Las Vegas Aces. Next, we have Pops Mensa Bansu who is the general manager of the NBA G League's Capital City Go-Go. Pops is a former professional basketball player here in the United States with the NBA and overseas. Our final panelist is Ovi Maheli, pro bowler and two-time All-Pro NFL veteran. He's the founder of the Ovi Maheli Foundation, which educates and empowers youth to save and sustain the environment. Hosting tonight's conversation is Sarah Kusta, the first female to win a New York Emmy in the sports analyst category. Sarah, who was a D1 college basketball player, is a color commentator for the Brooklyn Nets and also appears on Fox Sports. Now I'll turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Alicia, Michelle. Oh, I'm new to this. Are we good? There we go. Hey, everyone. Um, it, it's so wonderful. Thank you, Danielle, Alicia, Michelle, one for having me and for having all of us because if you just introduced um, the other panelists. It is a star-studded lineup. Unfortunately for Ovi's request, we don't have introduction music, but we should. <laughs> you're all such heavy hitters, and it's amazing to see. I know Pops and Ovi, what you've done throughout the course of your career, Angel, of course, still playing, um, but how you're giving back to the community in the ways in which it's been important to you, um, not just having a platform for who you've been as a player, but also carrying on. So, um, Angel and Ovi, I know you both have your own foundations and pops you give back. First, um, Angel, start with you. If you could tell us a little bit about your foundation and what it was that made you decide that you wanted to start it. Yeah, so um, my foundation is called uh, the Angel of Country Dream Foundation. First of all, hello, everybody. <laughs> Good to see I you guys. Should, I should say, we should all get a, I feel like the questions we keep asking everyone is how you're doing and how you're holding up. So I hope right. you all look healthy and safe, but certainly I hope you all are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so it's called the Angel McCarthy Dream Foundation. It's where we wanted to um, help kids' dreams come true. So um, we just wanted to uh, build a foundation where kids can can just motivate themselves, especially through sports, and know that you know their dreams can come true. Uh, for example, when I went to Africa. Um, and we had a camp for the girls, we just let them know that it doesn't stop there. You use sport as a tool to get anywhere you want in life. Um, you know, so I think uh, that's what we try to do in encouraging the kids. Angel, first off, what do you feel like has been the biggest challenge when you've started it, but also the biggest reward? The biggest challenge, I think the biggest challenge is actually, like you said, starting a foundation, you don't know which way you want to go, which direction, what's your passion. Because I wouldn't tell people just to have a foundation, just to have one. You got to be passionate about that specific thing. Um, and the, of course, the reward is um, giving back, of course, um, seeing, um, you know, the smiles on the kids' faces and what you do, because the, the, the real reward is you're helping yourself through others, you know to be able to give. So that's been the, the real reward, um, being able to give back and help. That's so special. Ovi, can you tell us a little bit about your foundation and, and what made you decide that that was the direction you wanted to go with it and why you started it? Absolutely. And uh, hello, everybody. Nice to uh, be here in front of you. This is my first real uh, Zoom conference to several people. So I'm excited to, to talk and interact and uh, be in a group. But um, my foundation was something that I never thought I'd be involved in, um, but you know, the way things happen, uh, uh, they all happen for a reason. I loved uh, cartoons growing up and I loved cartoons, especially that had people who looked like me in it. And I, for some reason, got hooked on this cartoon called, uh, and comic called Captain Planet. And I, I was reading these comic books and I was watching the cartoons. There's a African character named Kwame who had these earth powers and they're doing really cool stuff taking care of the planet. And I just thought that it was, it was kind of dope how he took care of those who couldn't take care of themselves and gave a voice to the voiceless. And then as I got older, uh, when I had kids, um, my daughter and my son respectively had issues with air quality and were born premature and couldn't leave the hospital because of the air quality in Atlanta. So, you know, kind of going back on um, what I learned from Captain Planet and just my interest being peaked, I wanted to learn more about uh, climate change and global warming and air quality and environmental justice. And the more digging I did, the more I realized that even though black and brown people have the least to do with climate change, they're uh, impacted in a, uh, a ridiculous way where the hurricanes and the floods and the tornadoes and a lot of the um, issues with coal plants and landfills and uh, pollution, it all affects people of color. Yet people of color aren't really invited to take, care, take part of the uh, benefits of the green economy. So it's just been a disconnect where I allowed sports to be that catalyst in the middle and can really help show kids how to make green by going green. So I created a comic book called Gridiron Green. I started a green tailgates where we teach sports fans how to tailgate in an environmentally responsible way. I created the green speaker series where you go to high schools and HBCUs to talk about green jobs and really just tried to, you know, pull the wool out from other people's eyes and let them know that there's a way to, if you really love sports, you got to take care of the, air the athletes need and the water athletes drink and the planet athletes use to you know play their sports oh that's amazing and in listening to you and listening to you talk about it I, I think for so many of us it's like yeah of course like that's it's what you want to do it's, it's a great cause to get behind but it's not as easy as it seems just to be doing the things that you're doing uh what did you what have you found and i'm sure there's Many of them, but what's one of the biggest challenges in starting this that you face? Ooh. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, a, how much time it. do we have? Um, yeah, I mean, starting the foundation is the hardest part. Um, and even if you are someone who uh, is of some note or some semi celebrity, like I have a little little bit of celebrity power. I'm not, I'm not nowhere near Angel or the rest of the people. None of us are nowhere. That, None of us yeah. are anywhere near Angel. But, you know, so we're all even, in the same boat. Even with that, like, there was never a playbook uh, that people gave me on how to run a foundation, how to, you know, mm -hmm. raise money for a foundation or a nonprofit. Uh, Cause there are so many wonderful nonprofits out there that it, it's more about collaboration. I've learned that more to work with, you know, Sierra club and nature conservancy, work with other groups that are all moving in the same direction. So that's helped. But one of the hardest parts is 
to get people to, to focus or to understand that this slow moving monster that we call climate change is something that deserves people's time and money as well to try and fix this because it, we've been doing it for a long time and people have been talking about the environment for a long time, but it's been a, a very white movement that has not broken into communities of color in the way that it should be. And if it stays a very white movement, it's not gonna be a successful movement. And that's where I think sports can make sure we get all people involved and understand that they can be part of the solution. Yeah, you're a great voice for that. Before we dig into this further, Pops, I wanna to get to you. Um, successful MBA career, you're the general manager of the Capital City GoGo. Um, you don't necessarily have your own foundation. However, you do a bunch of other philanthropic work. Tell us a little bit about where you put your focuses towards it in giving back to the community. Yes, well, first of all, I want to say hi to everybody. What's going on, Angel? Um, so, yeah, I, I may not have my own uh, particular foundation, but I am on the board of a foundation that provides primary and maternity uh, health care for women and children in Ghana. Uh, my cousin uh, started this foundation a few years ago, and while I was playing, being of Ghanaian descent, it was always difficult for me to put my name on something that I couldn't directly, you know, have control of or impact uh, while I was playing. So when I retired, I saw my cousin and I went to one of the, um, the banquets and I was immediately impacted. I went to Ghana and went home for the first time in 2013 and saw the conditions that some of these women were trying to give birth to their, their children and, and having kids, yeah, I was mortified and it really broke me down. And, you know, I, I was, I'm, I'm on the board of that now. So every year we're doing a lot to, to help that, help that and change those conditions. I'm also started the Pops Mesabansu basketball camp in Ghana and hopefully Angel and I will be teaming up moving <laughs> forward to, uh, to continue that and she'll be, you know, helping the, the girls side of things. Cause I know she did the camp in Ghana too. And, you know, it's all about collaborating and doing things together because we're a lot stronger as we come together. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to working with Angel in that regard. And I'm also starting um, the PMB and Seed Academy, uh, Seed Academy in Ghana. So just trying to provide opportunities for kids who look like me and didn't have the same opportunities I did growing up. So trying to create a path and a, a bridge for these kids to be successful in life. Pops, what, that's incredible, first off. Um, what, what is it like, though, starting these different things and also starting so much um, in, a, in a different location and not necessarily always being there? Yeah, listening to what Ovi and Angel said, I think one of the most difficult parts is just getting it started. And you just got to take a leap of faith sometimes. I had gone my whole career and not been able to have that impact. And I feel like, you know, we have been blessed with these, with this talent to play a sport and, you know, wealth and whatever notoriety, like Obi was saying, now it's our social responsibility to give back. And me, I don't see it as, um, you know, me get, getting anything from it. I see it as my, my responsibility to provide this, uh, these opportunities for the younger generation because somebody helped me out and now it's our turn to reciprocate and give back to them too. So it was all about taking a leap of faith and just, just going out on a limb and, and helping others, whether I'm here or not. I have people in Ghana, people in London who, who also helped me to facilitate a lot of this. And now that I've retired, you think I'd have a little more time, but with my job, it's a, it's a little difficult at times. But, you know, again, this is part of what, we're, um, what is expected of us. So I have no problem. Uh, uh, that's, that's a beautiful sentiment and it's amazing. And we want to thank you and Pops, you bring up in a really important point about time. Um, because while so many want to do these good things and help others and give back, you need the stamina, you need the time, you need to make the time, of which all of you have a ton of other priorities as well, whether it's your jobs, your families, um, what you're doing, Angel, still you as a professional athlete. How do you, how do you endure that? How do you compartmentalize? Um, Angel, I'm going to start with you, but I want to hear from all of you. How, how do you try and have that type of motivation to maintain the work you're doing for others while still taking care of the responsibilities um, that you have in your professional life? Um, I think that's what makes the challenge awesome, that you have to juggle the time that you, you do in your sport or whatever life and still find the time to give back and, and do those things. So, um, you know, our schedule is very busy. You know, we play overseas and then we play in the WBA. So no, there's not a lot of time, but whenever we can get time, 
Um, I try to schedule things in. Um, like I was able to go to Ghana and do a camp. And it's funny because Pops was doing a camp and I found out as soon as I was doing it, I'm like, oh my God. So that's why, you know, we have to collaborate. But just stuff like that, even when you do things to give back, amazing things happen, like seeing Pops do his camp in Ghana. But you just juggle the time. You just find the time to give back, you know. Um, I think that's what makes, makes it an awesome challenge. Obi, what about for you? Man, time management. If, if anybody could do <laughs> what we had to do in college, regarding time management, where we had to go to workouts, we had to go to practice, we had to go to school, we had to find some time to be social. <laughs> like, I love playing professional ball because I was like, all I do is play ball, that's it? Oh, that's great. But it, it, it's hard to just do ball, like Pops kind of said, when you know you've been given so much and there's so much that you could offer back. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, it's more of just having some, a really good CRM system or, or just having people who can work with you that understand how you work and can um, really mesh with your schedule. Because I did not have that at first, and it was craziness. But now, you know, from my wife to my um, – uh, I have an executive assistant who's amazing and uh, really a great team, my nonprofit board members, picking the right board members. And I think everyone can test this yeah. is key in having your nonprofit work. I, um, when I was playing in the NFL with the Falcons, I had board members and uh, most of them were great, but a lot of them were there because I was playing in the NFL with the Fal Falcons and not because they really were for my cause. So when I retired, everyone all of a sudden didn't have the time to, uh, you know, come to the events or to help me fundraise or be on these boards. And it was a real eye opener. So finding the right people to help you and to go on this journey with you has helped me really be able to manage my time and be there uh, when I need to be. Pops, what about for you? Oh, uh, I just want to piggyback off of what Obi said. And I guess this is more so to, to Angel because she's the only active player. Speaking of that, Angel and I played in Turkey together about 10 years ago. And <laughs> still going strong. It looks like she's 25, so I don't know how she's still oh, doing. Boy. I can't even walk up. <laughs> you know, hats off to, to Angel on that one. But for me, um, based on what, what Ovi said, I always tell when I was working at the Players Association and even now when I speak to, to athletes of today, I always tell them, take advantage of your impact and your reach while the ball is still bouncing. Because mm -hmm. As soon as, like Obi said, as soon as, as soon as you're done, there's some people who may not be as apt to, to wanting to help and wanting to, uh, you know, you know, you know, give that lending hand. And you know, and I, you know, Obi was a uh, was a prime example of that. And I really try to push athletes while they're still playing to to have as big an impact as possible, or, or use their reach and speak to their owners, speak to the GM, speak to people who want to be close to them. Maybe even if it's just for the fact that they play ball, take advantage of that. If not, make sure you network, make sure you're able to, to build relationships. And, you know, for me, not being an all-star or anything like that, I'm not even close to what Angel <laughs> was when, when I was a player. But, for, but I knew I always was respectful and built these relationships and was able to network. Once I retired, it was all able to come full circle and I was able to use that to my advantage when it came to needing help or even finding a job. I was able to, to lean on those relationships that I had made. So, the um so yeah i don't know if i if i missed the question i know i went no <laughs> no that's no you're spot on and, and you're leading you're leading us to something else because i feel like that's really important um for just the different places you're all at and angel i go to you because as we mentioned you're still playing but what advice would you give to other influential sports figures or professional athletes now that are looking to use that platform to try and create a social impact yeah, Ovi and Pops just made two totally good points. Uh, first is networking. You know, even while the ball is bouncing, you want to take that time to really network and meet people. And that's what's something I, I wish I would have learned when I was younger. I've always had so many influential people that, were, that I was meeting, but I was never really taking the time to really maybe get their card or reach back out. You know, so I would encourage people to definitely take that seriously, that networking. Um, Cause that's serious. You never know who on your phone, but you can call back to help uh, your foundation or your business or anything. And um, what Ovi said with, with just the, the people you have in your corner, who's on your team, you know, who's in the background putting everything together. Um, I think that's what creates a good foundation, having the right people 
like you said, board members, the right people in your corner. That's what really creates it and makes it special. Obi, is there anything else that you would think of? I know you have been kind of the pieces of advice you would give, but is there any other advice if you're going back and, and talking to, you know, players now or anything, things that they should get ahead of doing if this is something that they're looking um, to try and do in the future, to try and make an impact and make a change? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's it's the same thing I tell uh, my guys. I, I've been blessed to go back to Wake Forest University, uh, my alma mater, and go back and talk to some of the seniors. And I tell them, even from the college point of view, if you can do it in college, then if you're yeah. blessed enough to play the pros, then uh, you're already clicking on all cylinders. All of these, I don't, I don't know if boosters is the right word for them, but the people yeah. who fund the scholarships and come to these luncheons and want to help you in a legal manner, you know, ask to you know, shadow them, ask to uh, learn from them, ask to just hang out with them. And you'll find people who are not only enamored at what you can do on that football field, basketball field, on any uh, play surface, but they get to know you as a person. And you get to figure out how they got to a position where they can donate millions of dollars to support you, uh, you know, going to the school for free. Same thing when you get into the pros. The people who own these teams, the people who work to make sure these teams run, they all have a wealth of knowledge and not including the C-suite level uh, ticket holders who they're excited to meet you. Like They're going to open up their whole life and, and tell you how they got there. And then you can understand the finance world. You can understand the real estate world. You can understand, you know, just the, the startup world. And I've been blessed to do that with people in Atlanta where I didn't want to stay in all those lanes. But at least I had a bigger understanding of how things work. And I always am able to hold a conversation or be able to connect people as well, where um, it uh, uh, has benefited me. And, the, and that's uh, w one big thing as well. Athletes or just people in general need to, and it, it's natural to say, how can you help me? How can you help me? I need this. I need that. I need this. But if you go forward and expect nothing in return, just say, hey, man, how can I help you? Um, you know, uh, I know your son's a big fan. Maybe I can get uh, my teammate. I can get a uh, uh, you know big fat Michael Turner to come uh, you know come to your birthday party, or I can get Roddy White to come help you out here. Or can I show up to your nonprofit? Like I love doing that uh, during my time with the Falcons, and even now, yeah. just it, it costs you nothing. Go to every gala, go to every nonprofit function, show up, shake hands, and I enjoy meeting people. But to them, it was a huge thing. I don't know if. It, because I was a fullback and I, I'm more of a blue collar, hard work and just don't need the fame. I, I just like to, to be a part of the solution. But I was always saying yes on our Tuesdays, our day offs to go and support this cancer organization, this homeless organization, this seniors organization, because it felt great to just give back just by being there. No money was necessary for me, nothing special. It was just me being me. So athletes have that potential in college, high school, and the pros, and need to make sure they do that because that's when people will offer you things without you even asking them. You all clearly have the biggest hearts, and um, it's so it's so amazing to watch what you've accomplished as players, what you're still accomplishing. Um, but thinking about the legacy that you're leaving, because it's not just about who you are as athletes, but it, it's about so much more. Um, I want to ask each of you, and Pops, I'm going to start with you. Um, when, when you think about things, think about what you're doing now, what's the legacy that you hope to leave? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, when it comes to legacy, I, I would always want people to, to say that, you know, I, I was able to have an impact on the game and or impact with people through the game. I think for me, I had a coach who to introduce me to the game at 13 years old and I was going down a different path. And had I not been in introduced to basketball or moved to the U.S. to go to school, uh, I don't know where I would be today. And so when that coach passed away in 2002, I, you know, committed my, my journey as a player and even, even after I'm done playing to commit it to what his legacy was. And that was inspiring and empowering the youth to be great through the game. So anything I did as a player, I always did it for the younger generation. I always did it for people who look like me so that they could see a mirror image of themselves in a, in a successful position. So showing them that somebody who, in, who picked up the sport late or wasn't, um, who didn't have an opportunity to go down that path, I, um, you know, once that window of opportunity opened, I kicked it open and look what it's done for me. And now it's time for me to 
reciprocate, like I said before, and give back. So it's all, it's all about um, empowering and uh, inspiring the younger generation. Angel, what about for you? Sir, that's such a good question. I actually never even thought about it. <laughs> um, I just hope that, you know, it could speak for itself. You know what I mean? But I, I guess I would agree with Pops, just leaving that impact that we weren't just athletes that just did it, you know, in mm -hmm. our sport. We wanted to give something of ourselves back. So hopefully, you know, that piece that we gave of ourselves, it can just speak for itself and just live long that people know that, you know, I got here because I was inspired by Pops. I was inspired by Ovi. You know, their foundation helped me get here or, you know, their words of encouragement. So um, it's just stuff like that. It just speaks for itself. It just, you know, makes you a legend. I guess a, a legend. I don't know. But <laughs> I never, that's a good question. I never thought about it. <laughs> the way to leave it at. Ovi, for you? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a crazy, amazing opportunity just to be here and give this. And, uh, it, you know, let the chips fall as they may. It's just like my parents always taught me, you do your best. You do as much as you can for as long as you can, help as many people as you can. And uh, people will remember you how they remember you. But I, I look at uh, athletes like Matumbo, Matumbo's foundation. I've been to his yeah. gala several times. And it's just, you just get awe at what he's able to do with his name. You look at other people, Magic Johnson, you have, you know, tennis and football, basketball. The players who do it right, they have, hundreds of thousands who will affect hundreds of millions of people uh, just by going through their camp, by attending their gala, by getting a, a funding from that. And I think uh, every athlete here, Angel and Pops, can all talk about the importance of an opportunity. You know, we've all been, you know, on that bench where we just want an opportunity to, to show the coach what we can do. We've all just wanted an opportunity to provide for our fans to really be in the mix. And if, as a nonprofit, whether – through your example or through one of your programs, you can give that kid that that all important opportunity just to show out and show up. That's that's everything, you know. So uh, my legacy, I would love for it to be just uh, giving kids a chance to be their best, allowing kids to be the best version of themselves. Uh, I'm also on the board of United Way and gets a chance to you steal certain things from their board on my on my board, my foundation, and uh, just the, the work they do is absolutely amazing. But the zip code, this is what Yardaway focuses on a lot, the zip code that you are born in should not determine what you decide to be in life and how high you can rise in life. But unfortunately, it does. They have it all mapped out with different colors and uh, different opportunity zones and what's, what works where. But we should make it to where where you're born, what school you go to, what part of town you live in shouldn't determine who you are. And with our nonprofits, with our influence, we can definitely change that. So I can hope my legacy could be, uh, you know, starting a nonprofit that grows and leaving um, an imprint where kids can have the ability to be the best version of themselves. Uh, you, you all are already making a huge impact and a huge imprint. Um, I want to I wanna have you think back because I'm sure there's countless memories. Um, Pops for you. Can you give me an example of one of the times where you felt most, um, maybe just exhilarated, excited, uh, appreciated most a moment where you felt that impact, you felt what you were doing for the community um, made the biggest bit of difference? Well, uh, I would have to go back to when we did our first camp in Ghana when, you know, Angel was doing hers at the same time. It was, not only was it heartwarming to hear that Angel just took it upon herself to go to Ghana and do a camp. You know, that was, it was just amazing to know that she was uh, using her, her talents and her, her celebrity to, to impact um, girls. And I know half the girls that came to our camp went straight to her camp the next day. So it was great to know that they had such a wealth of basketball. But in that regard, I would say the camp. You know, like I said, we had, it was my first time doing a camp um, and just, went out on a, on a limb and just was like, I'm going to do a camp. It's going to be for a hundred kids, whether five or a hundred show up, we're going to make sure they're going to have it. They're going to have a great time, learn some, the fundamentals and basics of the game and just enjoy themselves for two days. 400 kids showed up. <laughs> Four. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. It was the most humbling and, uh, you know, uh, like you said, exhilarating moment for me pretty much in my career. And that's when I realized what my life purpose was. When you figure out what your why is, then you begin to live. And that, from that moment right there, I realized what I was doing 
and what I was going to be able to do was going to go a lot further than I would have ever ima imagined. And like I said, it was supposed to be for, you know, after like two days, it was like 80 to 100 kids had signed up. So I was like, okay, at least we're going to fill our quota. And then I was, I walked on the court and I started counting. And I was like, this isn't 100 kids. And my brother was like, <laughs> it's a lot more. And we ended up counting. It was like 398 or something crazy like that. So it was, it was, it was beautiful. And now, now we, 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 we came back together and was like, imagine what we can do if we put more resources and more marketing and did it in, in other areas of Ghana to help the kids. So it's going to go a lot further. And, you know, hopefully the impacts goes a lot further too. So I'm definitely excited about that. It's incredible. Uh, Angel, can you think of an example? That, yeah, that let me say something real quick. That's a lot of kids <laughs> to come to a camp. Let me tell you the one thing about Ghana. It's 90 degrees like every day. Right? No. And, and they don't have indoor facilities. So these, all these kids came out in the 90 degree heat to, to work out and learn outside. They only have outdoor courts. So I think that's so special that those mm. kids came out and sacrificed and we're out there hot and it's like, man, but they're working so hard, they don't care. So I, I think that's, that's just can I, can I, Yeah. I, I yeah. Regard, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Angel. Uh -huh. To her point, it is um, 100 degrees pretty much every day. <laughs> and during the summer when we did our camps, it's rain season. So mm -hmm. because there's only outdoor courts, like you just pretty much have to have to, a prayer and hope that it does not rain on the days you do your camp. So one of the things that we're doing is when we when we start the camp and then start our academy, we, we intend to build a facility for the for said academy. Then our biggest goal is to build an arena, a multi-purpose arena yes. to allow for sporting events, concerts, you know, they just started a league in Africa called the Basketball Africa League. So we really want to not only just have um, the impact of the grassroots level, but we want to foundation so that the kids can develop and go on and you know continue to hone on their skills and have somewhere where they could play year round that's big that's big to actually build that facility see that's huge right there <laughs> that's what they need you know because those kids work so hard and they're out there outside working hard like that's tough um to answer your question sarah i would have to agree with pops just kind of doing that camp in africa it changed my life the kids so I did the all girls camp and it was a lot of girls that showed up. I didn't think many girls would show up, but it surprised me how many women are serious about not just basketball, but sport in general um, in that continent, you know, um, because they don't have the resources um, that we have. We can just take for granted here. And I think the main thing they learned was because um, they have a high statistic of women that drop out of sport. And when I kind of explain to them that there's so much more, use that sport as a tool. You can go to college in the States or wherever and, and get a degree. Um, the NBA is hiring more women than they ever have before. You can be a general manager. You can go play basketball in Europe or you can play at the WNBA. When they started to hear that, their eyes got big and it was like, oh, so I am playing for something. This is for a reason. So that really stuck with me because um, I just think they thought that there was just nothing left because they're women and there is so that that really touched my heart <laughs> then they started dancing they, they just <laughs> like they were just so humble and just so appreciative they started with the dances they taught me their dances and stuff i mean it was really a life-changing experience wait real quick back to that how what made you decide to go do the camp in ghana yeah, yeah um so what? i had a yeah i have a friend who's been going to ghana for a long time and um, he told me to, to come over and check it out. Maybe you can do a count. I was like, oh, I don't know, you know. I, I, I will admit, I was like, I don't know. Um, then I said, you know what, let's do it. So I, got, I called Adidas to help me with some funding because we sponsored the camp. And Adidas willingly gave me the money to help sponsor the camp. And, um, you know, I met some guys over there that helped me put the camp together. We put it together. And we had about 100 girls come out. And they didn't even believe I was coming. They're like, she's, we've never had a WNBA player here. She's not coming. And I was shocked. Like, they really didn't think, you know, they'd never had that before. So um, that, that's kind of how it happened, kind of by default. So and now I'm like, I'm ready to go back, <laughs> you know, because it was life changing. That's dope. Extraordinary. All right, Ovi, what about that's you? Oh, I, I'm feeling bad now because uh, no, I haven't been to Nigerian camp. I've done no night football Nigerian camps. 
I got all my guys, Adewale Ogunle and O.C. Mignore and uh, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. Amobi Okoye. They all do camps in Nigeria. I'm like, I'm going to do a camp in Nigeria. I'm going to do a camp in Nigeria. Yes, yeah. I mean, I haven't been able to get it uh, done. I'm going to join one of theirs eventually. But <laughs> congrats, Pops, Angel. Man, yeah, congrats on that. that that's amazing because a lot of my people, uh, my cousins and uncles, they've been telling me to do a camp in Nigeria. I know what would mean to them. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have that 2021. I'm, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. But um, to answer your question about, I guess when you know what you're doing is uh, uh, is real or affecting the kids, was, was that what you're was that the Just question? Or an example of something, yeah. <laughs> I got so caught up in the story. <laughs> like, I, I, no, do you have an example with all the work that you do? Is there one example of a time that it, it, it hits you most or hits you hardest of really that you're making an impact, you're making a difference um, that you kind of have, have held with you? Yeah. Yeah, one uh, that happened, it was it was a, a dope moment for me because uh, I'm a big uh, comic book head and I love cartoons. I'm a big kid. Um, and so I was at my second Comic-Con. I was at New York Comic-Con. I'm, work, I'm work, working with the United Nations on their SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. And my first comic book, uh, Gridiron Green, um, it had uh, the, the SDGs. We were about life on land. And so we had our little booth over here. And it was the same year that uh, Black Panther was coming out. Mm -hmm. And so my man, uh, um, I'm blanking on his name now, um, the head, the Black, Mr. Black Panther. Um, what's his name, guys? Angel, help me out. Who's oh. the, the actor? Oh, um, oh. Black oh. Panther. What's his name, Pops? <laughs> See? See? Chad yeah, Bozeman. Chadwick Bozeman. Yeah, Chadwick oh, Bozeman. So, yeah. so um, I see Chadwick over there signing autographs. And so I go up to him, and I'm just, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So... I go up to him, I was like, yo, uh, Chad, Chad was, I, didn't say that. I was just like, sir, hello, I'm over my hail, yeah, I play a little football, you know, excited for the movie to come out. And he's like, good, good, what you up to? I said, you know, I got a booth down there, I'm doing um, uh, a comic book called Gridiron Green. He's like, what's it about? I was like, well, using sports to promote sustainability, because, you know, more people of color got to get involved in this, because there's a chance to do good and do well. And he's like, great. So, you know, I gave him a copy and whatnot, and... I gave a whole bunch of other kids copies and I started talking to him and showing the comic book and his kids started flocking around. Not that they were on me more than him, but they were really excited about the comic book. I had a kid in a Captain America um, uh, outfit and him and his dad, they got the comic book and they're like, I've never seen a black environmental superhero. I, that's like a new category for me. He's like, my son is really into, you know, the environment, earth sciences, but, you know, he gets teased because... Black people don't do environment. Like, you know, how many black environmental superheroes do you know of? Zero. Like, you're the first one I've ever seen. And he wants to get more involved in all things environment. And he always talks about the air quality at school. He learns this. But the fact that you created a, um, something that is fun and exciting, I can teach him a lesson and can allow him to kind of dip his toe into uh, the waters of the green economy when he gets older that's just great. He's like, I want to order some for my school. I want to order some for um, my um, my district. And he was just really excited. I still keep touching him today. But so many people have been really um, excited and, and have been telling me on social media and just reached out to me directly that allowing them to really widen their horizons and think differently and, and be a part of something that we all need to be a part of, which is make sure that we leave the earth better than we left it that we found it making sure that when we talk about legacy we're not just doing it in certain areas and forgetting the most important part not you know wrecking the planet to where our kids and our grandkids don't have something to, to really to use and, and um uh be excited about so when people come up to me and say that the comic book is helping to kind of ignite that that passion and that excitement and that energy around taking care of our planet i know i'm doing something that's legit that's going to help my kids and my grandkids. It's it's amazing. Um, I in, whoever wants to jump in on this, all of you, you starting your own foundations, doing your things at the platform that you've had because of who you are as athletes. For some of our um, viewers out here, those that are listening in, if they haven't felt in many ways different organizations or the community or they're looking for way like if if they don't necessarily have the means to start their own foundation, but they want to give back. They want to do some good. What would be your advice? Um, maybe just the, the small steps or small starts. If someone in the community is like, I want to make a difference and help in some way, what would you suggest to them? 
I would say first find the passion that they want to get into. That's the first step. Don't just say I want a foundation, then you know, you're scrambling, you don't know what you want to really give. The passion creates the foundation. Um, and then the next steps, what would you say, guys? I don't know, what are the next steps after that? <laughs> <laughs> you you had a great start yeah. though. Yeah. Well, a great start. <laughs> Pops, what if one of your players came to you? Um, and it's not even about starting a foundation, but just like, hey, you know, I, I want to do some good for the community. Um, I, I don't really know where to go or where to start or how to begin. What would you, how, what would you guide them to go do? I would say in everything, you have to start with a foundation. Start with what, like Angel said, what, is, what are your passion about? How would you like to help? And if you don't have the means or the reach to do so at that moment in time, you're still able to give your service. Gifts of service is still a gift. You can give your time, you can mm -hmm. be present for people, and you don't know how, like, when, you know, notice, and you know what? Shout out to everybody, of any, all the essential workers going out there and helping, you know, out in this, this difficult times. But when we was in school and we would have a doctor or a policeman or somebody come in, the kids would be like, oh, okay. As soon as a professional athlete came in, they were like, Mm -hmm. and it was there yeah was, and, and so you, you have to understand how far the impact is on kids who aspire to be you know in the same shoes as you so you just showing up and being there for them is going to go is going to have you know an impact that you could never imagine so i think giving uh, your time and the gifts of service is always as impactful as you know having your own foundation or even giving money that's right what no, about that's up uh, what, Go ahead. what about um, this is an idealistic question that I'm going to end on and then get to um, some questions that uh, some individuals have posed for you guys. Um, Ovi, I think we know your answer given your foundation, but if you had all the resources in the world, if you had all the resources, it wasn't about trying to found, find money, um, locations, geographic, anything. Um, what would be the one thing that you would look to change, whether it's on a local level, on a national level, on a global level, what's the one thing that you would want to make a change with? Education. Uh, that, that's, I think, the biggest thing, because um, though we focus on the environment, we, we also focus on giving kids the ability to make green by going green, because no one's going to care about polar bears when they came put food on the table. You know, no one cares about, you know, the Amazon rainforest when they're dealing with, you know, violence in their homes. No, no one's going to care about, it's like, a, it's a luxury sometimes. That's why I, I, I'm conflicted at times when, you know, I'm, I'm working in this space because certain, some of these things that we're fighting for, unless we can make it real and talk about how you can, again, make green by going green, it's, uh, it that doesn't really get to all the people it needs to get to. So my thing is education, give people, we call it sustain, sustainability STEM. So we teach the science, technology, engineering, and math in the sustainability space so that, you know, when it comes to solar panels and wind technology and clean energy, these kids can be a part of the solution. So I'd love, if I had all the money in the world, I'd go and be able to start teaching these kids, educating them at an early level so they can find ways to be able to help the planet and help their families. That's what I'd love to do. And um, the shameless plug for the last question about where to volunteer uh, I've been up with United Way for a long time from the NFL uh, Live United program to uh, being on their board. And they have a volunteer app, volunteer, B-O-L-U-N-H-E-R-E. -E. There's an app where you can go and buy your zip code. It will show you all the different volunteering opportunities Ooh. that you can uh, get. So if you go to your iPhone or, you know, if you are a weird person that has an Android, you can uh, go to vol <laughs> volunteer and uh, you can figure out all the different ways that you can you know, give back to your community. That's good. That's a good. that's some real advice. Yeah. Um, Angel, you have all the resources you could ever imagine. Well, what's what's the one area you wish you could impact most? You know what? Um, I would like to have um, more kids, and maybe we can make this a class in schools. Sit down with the cops, and they talk about what's going on out here. How. <laughs> the cops would like us to talk to them how the cops can treat us better uh, we did it before and we did it with carmelo anthony he had um a group of cops come and he had a lot of black kids of all races and the kids got to tell their side the cops told their side and it was good to hear because we heard that the cops you know they go through a lot too they get cussed out a lot and sometimes they're on edge 
and we got to hear how some of the kids, their brother had got shot by the cops, so they're on edge, you know? So I would like for that to be more talks within our communities. So each community everywhere can just sit down and they can kind of talk about the differences. I think that could really help a lot of what's going on out here, what we see. That's good. That is good, that is good. Pops, you, what, what's one thing you uh, try and change, yeah. So for me, it would be access, which would ultimately lead to equality. Mm -hmm. um, similar to what Obi said in regards to your zip code shouldn't define you. For me, sorry. <laughs> for me, you know, growing up the way I grew up, I, if you had asked me at 12, 13 years old that I would have had the opportunity to play in the NBA and, you know, play all over the world, be an Olympian and, you know, now become a general manager to help, you know, so many people, I would have laughed because it just doesn't happen to people like myself. Those type of um, opportunities I just don't present itself to a lot of, you know, a lot of my friends. You know, I know I have a couple watching right now who were uber talented at a young age. And, you know, sometimes the opportunity is just not there. I, I was able to make it to this far. But again, there's so many, there's, there's tens of thousands of kids who play at a young age and not able to have the access or opportunities to do so. So for me, if I did have all the resources in the world, it'd be the access and, uh, and equality to help kids in, diff in difficult situations to get the education, to get the opportunities to, to, to thrive and, you know, find a way to, to better their lives and better themselves and help their families. Because, you know, I think it's, yes, we've got athletes and all these influential people who are going to reach out and try to help us as much as they can. But you can only help us so many people. Yes, and if we all band together, our reach would be a lot further, but I would really hope and um, love for the access and equality for, for kids who um, are in you know, less fortunate um, backgrounds or, or upbringings to have that access to, to thrive and you know, make something of their lives. Well, once again, I'll say, and I'll say from all of us, thank you to all of you because you are making a difference and I know there's a long way to go, but, but you're taking those steps. Um, from Kenny, this is a question for Ovi, um, and, and you've kind of touched on this, but more specifically, um, how can we get urban youth excited about sustainability? And I know you talked about the education aspect of it, uh -huh. but is there a way to get them excited, engaged, and passionate about it? You gotta make it fun. Like, um, it, it has to be something that is fun for them and i think once you get kids outside it doesn't even have to be outside but i love you know football you know most a lot of sports are played outside and you kind of get appreciation for simple things you know just you know that you know the way way that the football field smells you love you know playing on that grass even when your your head shoved into it because you get you fell down or something you know you you love going out there and you know going to the ocean or a lake it's just going outside and appreciating what God's given us and making it fun is what I think it's all about. When I first started in this environmental uh, uh, field, I used to have environmental football camps. And instead of football and life skills, we do football and environmental skills. And the kids at first were not too excited about it. But once they learned about different things about air quality and water quality and, and just what's going on around them, rather than just dealing with what's going on, they can you know be a part of the solution. They loved it. And the comic book and uh, the green tailgating has been um, really exciting to see people who were laughing at me uh, because like, hey, environment, black people don't do no environment. You know, gonna shoot. That, that's not, that's not my thing. I, why would I, I don't care about the, you know, the birds and the tree. I'm like, it's not about that. It's about people. You know, it's about making sure that we take care of our people and this planet because we need each other. And, um, when um, people, because you can go read the first comic right now, it's online. It's uh, comicsunitingnations.com. And there's several different comics. Mine's one of them at comicsunitingnations.com. Um, you read the comic, it's a fun story, teaches you about you know, taking care of the rainforest. You understand about deforestation. You realize that you know we all can be superheroes. I don't know if anybody's seen uh, the Spider-Man, uh, the, the newest one. Uh, with um, the black character. What's the name of that Spider-Man? Spider I've seen like a thousand times. What's it called, guys? The Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Yeah, it's a Spider-Verse. <laughs> and uh, the whole thing is anyone can wear the mask. Exactly. His whole thing that anyone can wear the mask was such a dope concept that anybody can be a superhero. And we have that same type of mantra with uh, Gridiron Green that 
you don't have to have the powers in order to take care of the planet. You all can do, uh, you know, make your own difference by just making some small changes. You all are definitely superheroes. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> one more question. Uh, this is to everyone in the group. It's from Muhammad. And I know we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier about some of the challenges. Um, but he asks, and Angel, I'll start with you. What were some of your stumbling blocks along your journey um, and the lessons, I think this is most important, the lessons you learned um, from some of those challenges. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so we got some excellent questions, but-, but Yeah, they got us uh, uh, getting deep. <laughs> um, you know what, I always tell the kids um, that success is not tomorrow. I think they always think it's like gonna be a week from now. <laughs> I always tell them, you know, success is blood, sweat, and tears, years. It's years of just, you know, working on your craft, building. Um, so some of the stumbling blocks, is you talking about through life or or, or like um, tons of stumbling blocks, okay? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, um, well, I, I would just say this then. Life or with, with, with your, yeah, anyway, however you want to take it. Yeah, I would just say this, especially, um, I had just recently tore my ACL last year and um, I missed the season. It was the first time I ever got injured. And it was a major stumbling block for me because I felt like I had lost my identity. I didn't know who I, who I was through the injury. And through, through that, I had learned that my identity is not just scoring 40 points on a basketball court. Your identity lies with who I am on the inside. And um, once I learned that, that's how I really started, um, started getting into giving back more. I was like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and cry that I can't play basketball. I'm going to start giving back and, and getting into things. So that's how I started giving back more. And then my foundation, I uh, partnered up with Boys and Girls Club, um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So um, a lot of things came through that. A blessing came through um, the injury. So, you know, through your stumbling blocks, you don't stop. You find a way to keep going. Um, and, and blessings come through that. So... Amazing, amazing. Pops, how are you going to follow that up? Uh, but no, any. <laughs> no. Um, to follow up the question is uh, Pops is going to go in and over, but it's stumbling block, and, and especially the stumbling blocks you think of and also the lessons you took from them. Yeah, you know, so speaking of stumbling blocks and getting injured, similar to Angel, I've had 12 operations in my Ooh. career. That right there. Is <laughs> wow. It hurts more. Oh. Yeah, it hurts. Jesus. But I've had 12 operations in my career, and every single time I was sitting on that operating table, I was looking at the ceiling trying to figure out if I would ever walk again. Mm. It puts things in perspective for you. For me, I used to just, once I, you know, recovered and fully rehabbed my injury, I used to just take joy in being able to, to run up and down and to practice. And my teammates used to laugh at me. It was like, why are you so excited for practice? And I would say, because a few months ago, I couldn't even walk. Yeah. Every single time I've had an injury, I've always, you know, I've always at one point in time, quitting has, 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 you know, found its way into my mind, but I pushed it out as, as soon as possible because I thought about my why. My why was, the people who I'm playing basketball for. I, I always tell you, I never played basketball for myself. Yes, I love the sport. It's done a lot for me and my family. But basketball has provided me an opportunity to help others. I think, like I said, I wanted to provide a mirror image um, to a younger generation so that they could see who and what they can become. And so that's what kept me going. Every time I got hurt and thought it was the end of my career, I was like, you know, if you quit now, think about all the people you're quitting on. So it was, I always say it was a lot harder, more, it was more difficult for me to quit than it was to, for me to keep going. So I just kept going. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, LV. Stumbling blocks and the lessons that you've learned from them. Man, um, I'd say one of my stumbling blocks was that it's uh, being able to not, not really know your role, but being able to uh, – I understand how to play different roles because uh, you can't always be the leader. You can't always be the head. I mean, when I came out of high school, I was all county and all state and all this great stuff, and I was a tailback. So I was used to being the guy scoring the touchdown, spiking the ball. You know, my name was you know, plastered in the front page of the paper. Mahaley scores four touchdowns, uh, all this stuff. I had a big old statue I got in my, uh, my house for being state player or whatever. I got to college, 
And it, it happens to all of us. We're the best at our, maybe not Angel and Pops. They, those I was just amazing. about to say, hold but, on, not, know, to, but not like to it happens to me, where I'm the best in high school, you get to college, you got to start from the bottom again and kind of work your way up, prove yourself. You're the best in college. I was number one fullback going to the draft in 2003 back in the day. Thought I was, you know, big stuff. You know, drafted, go to the Baltimore Ravens. I got Ray Lewis and Peter Bowyer and Tony Saragusa and Deion Sanders and Ed Reed, the number one defense in the uh, country. <laughs> yeah, just won the Super Bowl. So I, I went from being best, you know, fullback in college and having to restructure just the way I operate to where, all right, you got to stay humble, but you got to stay hungry. And I work my way up, you know, um, it's about being able to uh, play the role that, that's given to you and being able to understand that it's not always all about you. And as athletes, sometimes, you know, you need a certain amount of ego to be able to be confident in yourself to play the game. But with that ego, it has to be matched with humility. It's like a yin yang thing where you got to be very confident in yourself, but also be humble to know that you can always get better. Someone's always trying to take your spot that, you know, you need to learn from those who, have come before you and shown you how to do things and that it, it, it can be done a better way. It's just about, uh, I think, being open. And I had trouble with that at first. It was a stumbling block for me trying to, um, you know, go from being the best to being <laughs> starting from the beginning and being the best to starting from the beginning. But when you learn that and you understand, uh, you know, that it's part of the process, I think back to what Angel said, it ain't going to happen in a week. You, no one who's great, it happens overnight. It's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes and working to kind of find your your, your spot, your role that really, um, I think, mean, where you want to be. You are all inspirations and you have so much class and grace and just thank you all um, for sharing so many of these stories. The last thing I'm going to ask you before we get to the networking part is from Jim. Um, and Angel Pops, Ovi, tell us how everyone could get involved or help your your foundations. Where do they go to? What do they look at? Um, what's the easiest way that they can help you guys? Angel, okay. first. Um, I don't have um, a link up now, but we, uh, eventually I will once I start to do something. So if I start on a project, we'll have a link where you can donate or something like that. So uh, you'll usually see it uh, on my Instagram, which is at McCautry, M-C-C-O-U-G-H-T-R-Y. My last name. I know it's long. So, <laughs> <laughs> I keep know your followers, so just make sure you message her a bunch of times so that she can see the messages. Where can you send people to, to help out your causes? So if you want to help out um, women and children in Ghana with, um, mm. you know, as far as maternity is concerned, maternity health care and primary health care, you can go to African Health Now. Um, on Instagram, it's at African Health Now. Also, if you want to be involved or help out with the academy or the camp, you can go to Seed Project Ghana. So the Seed Project G H. So S E E D P R O J E C T G H. Hopefully, I spelled that right. Um, uh, G H. So that's the the academy structure, and also you can help out with the um, the nonprofit in regards to helping women and children with their maternity care. Thanks. And Ovi, what about for your foundation? Yeah, um, this hats off my wonderful wife, Masika. Um, so that was my foundation director and I uh, you know, broke some of the rules and you know, dating in the business. And uh, now she's my wife and my foundation director. She gave me uh, a wonderful website. You married her, man. You're good. Yeah, I mean, don't tell nobody. I, you know, don't tell nobody. Uh, OMFgreen.org. So for the Ovi Mahalia Foundation, the word green.org. Um, you can order our comic books there. You can see about you know, how you can start your own green tailgate. Uh, you can sign up to have your high school or your university be part of the green speaker series. So we're really excited about the website. We have more updates coming, but right now, omfgreen.org uh, is where you can get all the information you need. Thank you. And if everyone, if um, those who are watching and viewing looks in the chat, I think Danielle's done a great job of um, Putting, putting all those things in there. Um, so to all of you, you guys, you, you are legends and you're incredible for what you're doing for everyone. And um, please know how much it's appreciated and also how much we appreciate you, you taking the time to speak with everyone here. So thank you again. And I think now, Danielle- Last time I had to say, hold on, Ovi, can we get a female uh, character? 
in, in the we, comic book or, or oh, what? Oh, I like that. We're, we're already working on that. So we're okay. trying to figure out if it's going to be the wife or the, the daughter who's going to be the female character because we have to have Batman and Robin. Not even Batman okay. and Robin. Like, they think both equally dope characters. So we got, you know what's funny? I want a Justice League. I want a Justice League of environmental superheroes. So they got the Aquaman, Superman, Batman. So I got Gridiron Green. I need a, a dope basketball environmental superhero. I need a dope hockey super environmental superhero. So we'll talk. Okay, we're going to talk over here. Yeah. We'll we need my <laughs> If you've Perfect. seen Angel Jump, you would know she's probably. I was going to say, Angel's yeah, already a superhero. So we just add rockets. her into the comments. Can you just put her on it? Rockets on her feet. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll talk, Obi. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. Thank you, guys. Um, Oh, here we go. There's Alicia. Yeah. Thank Daniel. you guys so much for tuning into this awesome panel. Uh, I hope this was a timely and informative conversation for everyone on the line. And thanks for all the great questions. Yes. And once again, just as a reminder, if you all look in the chat box, you'll see the panelist information.